Hello and welcome back to the next part in my series of videos comparing QTS and DSM on QNAP and Synology respectively. Today it's the, uh, the chance of looking at virtual machine use. Maybe you're going to be utilizing one of these platforms for one or more virtual machines and I'm pleased to say that the majority of solutions from both Synology and QNAP support virtual machines. In fact right now you are looking at uh, almost identical Windows 10 VM being shown on both a Synology and QNAP NAS platform. And they're both running on both of their flagship mid-range NASes, namely in the 53D series on the left from QNAP and the 920 Plus from Synology. These are two NASes that we're utilizing to look at the virtual machine software on both platforms. Now, a few disclaimers straight off the bat. First and foremost, just like the other videos, I'm gonna go through this as quickly as possible. I am using the screen recording software OBS. Consequently, there may be the occasional dip in performance there on screen. Unfortunately, there's not, not a lot I can do about that. Same goes for the fact that I am half screaming, uh, the half screening these two OSs right now in the web browser. And just like before, you will find that um, the, a lot of the system resources are consumed by both Chrome and the screen recording software. So consequently, this does make a big impact on performance in the output, so I apologize if that affects the recording. Also, while looking at these VMs and the software inside, we will need to refresh the pages from time to time. The reason being is both of these NASes are on a one GBE network. They're both utilizing a one gigabit uh, uh, switch network with this PC being connected via one GBE. Consequently, sometimes the actions of one NAS will consume so much of the network bandwidth, it may impact the other. So do bear that in mind. And finally, I have made sure to upgrade both of these NASes to um, 8 GBE for this video. Now, if you are going to run a virtual machine, you should use at least 2 gig of memory. On In the case of both of these systems, I am using 2 gig of memory for the VM for each of them, but both NASes I've got upgraded all the way to 8 GB. So I'm using a small portion of the system, but if you are buying both of these models by default, uh, they both arrived with 4 gig by default, so just to keep things nice and fair, I've made sure that both virtual machines are running on 2 gig of memory each. They have both got a limitation of 2 gig, and of course both of them have got an overriding system utilisation underneath the VM, so do bear that in mind. And I know this is a really long disclaimer, but I'm just saying that if you are going to run a VM on your Synology or QNAP NAS, bear in mind that the experience you may have will be very unique to your own system. And a lot of that is just to do with the NAS that you choose and the hardware inside. So let's carry on. Let's get rid of the system performance management, go out of the tools and talk about what these two devices bring to the table in terms of virtual machine use. The majority of NASs that are at least Intel based, you know, we are talking from Celeron upwards from both brands, will support at least one virtual machine. Now, both of them, you'll just head into their respective app center and you do find multiple tools for virtual machines. Now, we are really focusing today on the primary virtual machine tool from both of them. In the case of QNAP, that is Virtualization Station, and in the case of the Synology, that is Virtual Machine Manager. This is the tool that is included with both NAS platforms on QTS and DSM respectively. Although that's not the only way you can utilize or indeed interact with a virtual machine on both of these platforms. Case in point, if we head over to the um, Synology site, we can see a few third party tools that you may want to take advantage of. For example, TeamViewer, although not a virtual machine tool, will allow you to establish connectivity between your NAS and a TeamViewer-assisted PC in your environment. So again, not a virtual machine, but a nice means of um, creating a portal remote point to communicate with other systems in a semi-virtual in a semi -virtual fashion, or at least remotely. Next, you've got Docker, a lovely third-party tool that lets you install containers. And although there is a completely dedicated container tool on the QNAP in the form of Container Station, it's worth highlighting in today's video because we'll also be looking at um, the 
uh, Linux station tool. We're not going to look too much at container station today, but just take my word for it that both of these tools give you the ability to not only go through a registry of pre-existing containers and search through them and find existing containers that are generally just lightweight, more streamlined versions of virtual machines overall. Um, so for example, if you want to run a copy of Windows, I would recommend getting a virtual machine. If you want to run an app that exists within Windows or within Android, then you can almost certainly find a container for that. So case in point, if we were to look at Plex, now we could run the Plex application on our NAS real easy, or we can search the registry and find pre-existing Plex tools. Now at the moment, our network's quite busy right now because we are doing some uploading as well in the background, but that is going to play its part. But you can just search and find other applications in container form and install them in that compact way. But bear in mind that containers um, aren't quite as user-friendly and almost always never have a useful GUI with which you can play with in the background. So you've got no graphical user interface that you can interact with in a real easy fashion. A lot of the time, you will have to play around with a lot of the settings in the background using a lot of that coding. Now, the QNAP platform is near enough identical to that, but I will say that at least they're utilizing their own first-party platform with Synology support and a third-party platform. There's something very rare from Synology. Now, on the QNAP side of things, I've already touched on this. They've got that container application and they've got their own virtual machine platform and you can install TeamViewer as well. But on top of that, next to TeamViewer and uh, Container Station, you have got Linux Station. So if you want to install and open your own Linux VM, uh, the QNAP platform allows you to do that in less than five clicks. You just install the app, you open up the app, say which version of Ubuntu you want to install, click install. It will then download it from the main um, app center as it's doing there. And then once it's done, you can head into the VM that you've created and then access it. Once it's finished downloading, it will just show up here as we can see from one I've already finished earlier on using Ubuntu 18.04. You can change a lot of the settings, whether you want to utilize the HDMI out of your QNAP NAS, as well as change some of the network variables or add a disk drive if you've got one USB enabled, which I do. Um, otherwise, you can access it remotely via the network or utilize the MyQNAP cloud to do remote level access, or you can even just access it via your web browser, which is what I've already done here, which allows you to log directly into it. Just use the same default credential credentials you've created, or you can create different ones for the VM if you so choose. Now, bear in mind, a Linux-based VM, it still has a graphical user interface. It's still very useful to use. And it's a lot more resource um, efficient than a Windows VM. And again, you are seeing this half screen here and the way this is displayed because we are utilizing that half screen um, logic there for our video. But if we half that in there, we can see that again, a Linux VM gives you all the advantages. You can access the NAS files quite easily. You can change a lot of the settings. It's got its own app store. And if you've ever wanted to take advantage of Ubuntu and get used to this very light, fast VM and all of its applications, you can do that really easily here. And with the NAS, creating a virtual network switch, you can access all of the online resources via the virtual machine, just like you would on any normal PC. And again, this VM can be accessed pretty much anywhere in the world with the right security credentials. Now, Bear in mind that any VM or container that you create on your PC, um, so on your NAS system, be it supporting PC, Android, or any of the um, Linux-based VMs, they all take their part and make an impact on your hardware resources. So if you go back to that resource monitor we were looking at earlier on, you will see that some of the memory is being held by the VM. And that's one of the main reasons we're going for the eight gig of memory model because we wanted to show um, just how well these VMs can run, but we also need the NASes to run. So as you can see, there's a lot of already used memory there because of the way the VMs hold on to that memory whilst it's being utilized. Now, this is one of the areas in which these two brands go about things a little differently. 
Because if we go into, let's dedicate the next part directly to the virtual machine software on both of these platforms, and we can see the different priorities that these two platforms have with regards to virtual machines. Now, weirdly, and I don't, you know, I wouldn't normally say this, but in the case of um, Synology versus QNAP, the Synology platform is the one that's a lot more user friendly. First and foremost, the QNAP platform has a VM marketplace. So if you want, you can download ready-made business class VMs from everything from firewalls to some of the AWS um, file storage volume, virtual environments, already available here from that marketplace, and they are adding more and more. On top of that, you can directly from the user interface download a free Windows VM. Just one click, select the version of Windows, and at the moment there's Windows 10, a light version, the one that we're using for our video. Click it there, and then you can click download and install the VM, and you can create multiple of those VMs. And you've got 60 days evaluation period to add your own license, and that's the one we're using in today's video. On top of that, the virtual machines can be configured in a number of ways. And although both platforms have their own preset priorities and own configuration of a virtual machine, it's worth highlighting that the QNAP seemingly has more options. Let's take this VM that's running on both of these platforms. So first, let's take a look at the configuration of this virtual machine. Opening up the options, we can see there the name, we can see the CPU, the memory. Again, we can adjust that just however we see fit once the VM is off, but you can't change it whilst it's in operation. Change the video card. But again, it's only going to be dedicated to the NAS internal hardware. You can change the amount of storage the device has, change the network, create a separate network if you want, a virtual spare network. On top of that, you can change digital ISOs and virtual images that are built inside as well as assigning USB ports on the NAS to the VM so you can connect physical devices to the NAS and they'll be visible within the VM as well as changing a lot of the BIOS and keyboard options. On top of that, you can say who's got access to the VM. It's all very, very straightforward. And if you go to the bottom, into the settings, you can see lots of different options there about the first time boot of your VM as well as different options for different users and if you upgrade to the Pro Series, which requires licensing, you've got options there about when your VM is unavailable online. Now, the reason I say the QNAP one is more user-friendly is, weirdly, when I look at this, if I'm going to install a VM, the options on the um, QNAP software seem a lot more intuitive. So, for example, with this VM that's running here, it doesn't take a huge leap of imagination to see what everything is and what it does. So the power button there will allow us to power the VM. Pause obviously means to pause the VM. A little image of a monitor getting bigger opens it up in a separate window, much like we've already done. Opens it up there. Close one of those. If we look at it, we've got a picture of a camera, which is obviously snapshot. The picture of USB, which is a USB connected device. And again, export, sharing, everything's a lot more intuitive. You can restore backups if you choose to. In the settings menu, all of the icons are there. If we go into the settings, everything is, it just seems a lot more clearly labeled on here with the changes to the CPU. If you want to change the identity of that CPU in the VM, change the number of cores that the VM's got access to, the amount of memory, and again, memory sharing is a lot more evolved here on the QNAP Virtual Machine platform. And although the Virtual Machine Pro software from Synology has extra options, it should be said that the QNAP offering, all of those options are readily available off the bat. And again, the boot options are there, storage options of changing it, but you can also change a lot of the background caching options too. With video, you can select uh, what kind of video adapter you want to use, but it goes one better, because if your QNAP NAS has a PCIe slot that's powerful enough for graphics cards, such a, and you're gonna go for at least PCI three times eight or maybe 16, you can add a graphics card to your VM, which is quite cool for those that do intensive 
graphically enabled applications that require a more powerful GPU or graphics card inside. The QNAP platform, although the supported compatibility list is pretty short, you can attach a graphics card and attach it to your virtual machine. Lots of options are available. Again, change the speed of your USB ports. Go ahead and change some of the boot options as well. There's just more options readily available and it just seems a little bit more intuitive. Now, the Synology platform, although it doesn't seem quite as intuitive, there are still lots of business class options here. And although both of them can be used for business, you certainly get the feeling from Virtual Machine Manager that business is the priority here. So notwithstanding um, backups and snapshots and you know retention of snapshots of your images, and your virtual machines from the image option the way things are broken down and the kinds of uh, virtual machine you can upload not just isos but virtual hard disk disks vhds which can then be turned into a vm you can create a virtual hard disk that you would connect to a virtual computer that has no os so it is a virtual cpu virtual memory virtual motherboard so to speak because obviously these are based on physical attributes which is then connected via SATA to this virtual hard disk and then would boot just like a blank PC when you connect a hard drive with Windows on it. And again, the network configuration and the storage options are all there, as well as multiple tiers of those VMs all running in that storage area. So you see here, this is the cluster of storage being utilized for the VM and how much it's using overall and the virtual machine tab list are individual vms it's definitely got a more enterprisey outlook but ultimately both of these virtual machine softwares are very very similar but it does seem like the synology platform although incredibly enterprise i think does lose a lot of the clarity um, in that further down the line still a very very good tool and then of course there's that business of the pro version of the virtual machine management tool now there is virtual copies of their own platforms this is something we've not really talked about but both dsm and qts can be created virtually you can create a virtual copy of their nas software which is quite good for file hosting or for allowing tests of different network server storage environments both of them arrive with one license, at least with their system. But if you want to use multiple copies of their OS in a virtual form, you will have to pay for additional licenses. Now, both of them, as mentioned, have got backup and restore options, both built into their respective virtual machine software, which allow you to take images and um, connect an external drive that has a VM image and convert it into um, a virtual machine or you can go ahead and convert your existing DSM into a virtual DSM, and the same goes for QTS. Indeed, both platforms have got their very own dedicated VM backup tools. In the case of Active Backup for Business on the Synology and Hyper Data Protector for the QNAP, both of them um, supporting things like Hyper-V and VMware in a virtual environment. But I would say, Although the tools, um, once compared, the tool for active backup is a more diverse tool. In terms of virtual machine support, it's largely an even tie. And both of them do feel as intuitive and straightforward as one another, if you see there on screen. But I will say that the Synology tool overall incorporates a lot of the features and functionality that much more. And both of them allow you to either back up via um, the user credentials and online login or by installing a client application within the respective virtual machine on both platforms. Now, if we go into the virtual machines themselves, there's virtually no difference. The virtual machine you're looking at here is technically around about two weeks apart. The virtual machine on the right was one that I was utilizing on some rack mount NASes, I made a backup image of it, and it was when I was speed testing different platforms. So this was a VM that I was replicating time and time again to test internal speeds of SSDs and hard drives. Again, quite fluid, but of course, because I'm running screen recording software here, once again, OBS, the result is that the frame rate isn't gonna be great for you. But 
both VM platforms do come with a little remote control tab here. Now, I would say that the internal VM window via a web browser is not the ideal way to interact with a virtual machine. You should use tools like Remote Desktop, which allow you to enter your login credentials on any PC, and then, particularly if they're internet-based, make sure you get them right, then you'll be able to open the VM directly on your desktop rather than the web browser. The web browser should really be an ancillary or backup means to access a VM. But I will say that if you compare the overall system tools that are available, this is the Synology on the right with uh, the ability to change the scaling and latency for clicks and screen sizes. As you can see there, we can flick to full screen quite easily. And of course, if you want to hold keys as well, which again, the one issue you will find with virtual machines is trying to hold um, and hold buttons or do shortcuts. Generally, your shortcuts will apply to your local desktop, not the VM. So you're able to say, oh, I want to hold Control Alt and then tap Delete on your keyboard. It will then open up those tools just like it would if you were holding Control Alt Delete locally. But the QNAP side, I think, just has more options readily available. So, for example, the Synology one assesses your network environment on its own and then assesses the picture and the quality. You can change some of those options from the tool here, but overall, the quality of the picture you see will be dictated by the system or by changing some of these options. The QNAP, on the other hand, does, let, does let you lower and heighten the picture quality quite easily on the fly all these different variants and it will highlight you know if obviously the higher quality picture you go for the more data it's going to consume also vm control does seem a little better via this window on the qnap than the synology because the qnap um sorry the synology you can obviously go down here and just cancel the vm shut it down and then it will show a shutdown within dsm but the QNAP does seem to have a lot more options of restarting, forcing shutdown, and even taking some of those snapshots and stuff of the VM whilst in the VM, as opposed to having to do it whilst on QTS, which you may or may not have access to remotely. And again, all the same options there with the function keys, pressing Control Alt Delete is there done via a button. It will push a push, uh, it will push Control Alt Delete as a series of buttons. And if we look at the VM there, as that window shuts there on the right-hand side, we can see the VM connection of those USB drives or if you've added other external devices too. And you can access a lot of the VM tools within the virtual machine tool that is Virtualization Station. Even, even finding out more information about it from within the VM, something that is not readily available there on the Synology platform. A VM on both of them will look the same for, in terms of the VM itself. But it has to be said, I think virtual, Virtualization Station for the QNAP is a little bit more intuitive, something I thought I'd never really say uh, about a QNAP versus Synology video. But fair play to Synology, they do have a very enterprise-looking software there. And although both of them are very, very suitable for business, you can definitely tell that Synology have tried to go in at the enterprise level early doors. But this has been virtual machine use on DSM and QTS for the Synology and QNAP NAS platforms. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do let me know if there's stuff you want to see in future videos. In my next video, I will be looking at photography on both of these NAS platforms and how both brands deal with that. And do let me know if there's more you want to see going forward. Otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you next time.